Welcome back everybody. We're now in problem 12 and the question is x squared minus 2x plus 3 is equal to x cubed plus 2x plus x squared. What is that equivalent to? So let's just write this down. x squared minus 2x plus 3 is equal to x to the third plus 2x plus x squared. Now if we subtract x squared from both sides of the equation, those two actually cancel out and x third remains the same and if we add 2x on both sides of the equation this one's going to be gone and we're going to get plus 4x. Now if we subtract minus 3 from both sides of the equation we get minus 3 so 0 is equal to x third plus 4x minus 3. Now let me write this in a more intuitive way so x third plus 4x minus 3 is equal to 0. So the correct answer of this question, correct answer is E. So problem number 13. In right triangle PQR in the figure above, sine P is equal to 0 0.5. What is the length of side QR right here? Now let me highlight this angle that we know the sine of. So what is the definition of the sine? Well it's the side opposite to the angle over the hypotenuse. So sine P is equal to the, the side opposite to the angle, which is QR, over the hypotenuse, which is QP. Now we know what the hypotenuse is, right here, and we know what the sine P is, it's 0 0.5, right? And if we just substitute both of them on the equation, we can find QR. So 0 0.5, which is sine P, is equal to QR over 6, which is hypotenuse. And if we multiply both sides of the equation with 6, we get that QR is equal to 3. So let me write this down. Correct answer, correct answer is B. So problem number 14 asks, which of the following numbers is a counterexample to the statement all odd numbers greater than 2 are prime numbers? And remember, prime numbers are numbers divided only by 1 and themselves. So what you're looking for is a counterexample, an example that's going to disprove this statement, that's going to make this statement false, a number that's going to bust the statement. And let's just have a look at the options. Now option A, which is 2, is not greater than 2, so this statement does not refer to this number, it only refers to numbers greater than 2. Option B does, does fulfill those qualifications, it is not a number greater than 2, which is a prime, so we do not want that, we want a counterexample. Option 5 is also prime, option 7 is also prime, so we're left with option E, which is 9. And 9 is indeed an odd number greater than 2, but it is not a prime. It is divided by 3, so it's not a prime. So it busts this theory. It's a counterexample. So the correct option, correct option, correct answer, answer is E. So problem 15 says, if fx is equal to 2x minus 1 over x squared, what is the value of f of minus 0 0.1? And in order to find that, all you need to do is substitute x with minus 0 0.1, and you'll find the value of f of minus 0 0.1. So f of minus 0 0.1 is equal to 2 multiplied by minus 0 0.1 minus 1 over minus 0 0.1 squared. So how much is that? Well, that is minus 0 0.2 minus 1. And remember, we just substituted minus 0 0.1 wherever x was over 0 0.1 squared. And that's the exact same thing as minus 0 0.1 squared because squaring something, you always get a positive number. So it doesn't matter what the sign of the number is. So that is minus 1.2 over 0 0.1 squared. Now you could go two ways from here. You could either use your calculator to do that, or you could try to calculate it on your own. And let's just do both of them. So that is minus 1.2 divided by 0 0.1 squared. So how much is that? That's minus 120. So the correct answer is A. Now let's just see how we would go about calculating this. Well, this is minus 1.2. And we could just put a 1 over here as a denominator, that's the exact same thing, over 1 over 10, because 
0 0.1 is 1 over 10. 1 divided by 10 is 0 0.1 squared. So that's the same thing as minus 1.2 over 1 over 1 squared, which is actually 1, over 10. And how much is that? Well, uh, that is 10 squared. I'm sorry for here for that. So 10 squared by 1.2 is 120. And 1 by 1 is 1. So that's 120 over 1, 120. So that is minus 120. And we got the same uh, result as we got by using the calculator. So the correct option, correct option, correct answer, answer is A. So problem number 16 states that on a blueprint 0 0.4 inch represents 6 feet. If the actual distance between two buildings is 76 feet, what would be the distance between the corresponding buildings on a blueprint? So we know that 0 0.4 inch on the blueprint is 6 feet. So how many inches x is 76 feet going to be? And in order to solve for x right now, all we need to do is multiply both sides of the equation by 76. And we get that x is equal to 76 multiplied by 0 0.4 divided by 6. And if we just go ahead and use our calculator, let's just do that. That is 76 multiplied by 0 0.4 divided by 6. So that is 5.066666. So the correct answer is B, which is actually 5.1, but it's the closest one to what we got. Correct answer, answer is B. So problem 17 is a geometry problem, and it asks, in the figure above, if L is parallel to M, so L is parallel to M, those two, those two lines are parallel, so let me just write this down, parallel, parallel, and R is parallel to S, so those two lines are also parallel, so those are parallel. What is the value of X? And X is right here, that's the value we're looking for. So what we know, well, we know that those two are parallel and those two are parallel. And we also know that this angle is 60 degrees and this angle is 35 degrees. Well, what can we conclude from that? Let's just have a look. So if this is 60 degrees, we know that vertical angles are actually equal. And this angle and this angle are vertical, so they're equal, right? So if this is 60, this is also 60. And since those two lines are parallel and those two lines are parallel, this shape right here is a parallelogram. This shape right here is a parallelogram. So what do we know about the opposite angles of a parallelogram? Well, we know that they're equal. Opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal. And those two angles are opposite in this parallelogram, so they're equal. Now, this angle and this angle are also vertical, just as, just as those were. So they're also equal. So if this is 60, and this is 60, and this is 60, and this is 60. So we figured out that this angle is equal to this angle right here. And let me write this down. This is also 60 degrees. Now, since this is 35 over here, well, what do we know? We know that the, the angles, the alternate exterior angles formed by a traversal cutting two parallel lines are equal. So these two lines, L and M, are parallel. And these two angles are alternate exterior angles. Right? These two angles are alternate exterior. So we know that this angle is also 35 degrees. So what we, can we figure out from this? Well, we know that in any triangle, adding up the angles gives us 180 degrees. So x plus 60 plus 35 has to give us 180. So x plus 60 plus 35 is equal to 180. So x is equal to 180 minus 60 minus 35. So x is equal to 85 degrees, right? So the correct answer, the correct answer is C.